Hi Merpod, this is H Sama and today we're gonna make another mermaid tail together. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably have seen it and if you don't, go follow me, you're missing out. <laughs> and this video is just the tail, the bra is in a different tutorial, I'm gonna leave you the link on the description box. And if you are wondering if you can swim with this tail, the answer is yes, here are some underwater pictures for you. So the first tail we're making is a basic neoprene tail. Neoprene is more amazing because it's the same fabric used on scuba diver suits and surfer wetsuits. First, you're gonna trace on paper, cut it, and then trace on your fabric. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time explaining because it is just like we did on our previous tutorial of how to make a mermaid tail. I'm biased to say, but I think in our channel we have the most fantastic tutorials for mermen and mermaids. And if I ever inspire you to make anything, please hashtag HSummerBlog so I can see it. Just like any knit, neoprene has some stretch to it. So you don't have to leave any seam allowance, meaning that you can cut straight close to the paper. Neoprene is pretty great under the water. It's not see-through, it doesn't frail, it's easy to sew. Put the right side with the right side, pin everything, and let's go for the machine. Put on the biggest zigzag stitch that you have and go for it. I like to stitch and rewind on the same spot at the waistband because some of the tails, even professional ones, come undone on the waistband, so I make it very, very sturdy. And after that, we're gonna make our second stitch that is a straight stitch. You're going to do the same thing, just reinforcing the zigzag line. You can also do this by hand using the blanket stitch. But you cannot achieve this finish if you use glue, it will come undone once you start swimming vigorously. If you just want a one color tail, you are done. And follow the steps for closing like we taught you on our previous how to make a mermaid tail tutorial. I think it looks pretty good. Fun fact, most of the original professional mermaids started with a homemade neoprene tail. But none of them was plain. All of them had some specialty painting jobs that I'm gonna teach you right now. Well, obviously, I'm not gonna copy any of them, but here's a quick tip so you can upgrade any of your tails. Airbrush or spray paint. I'm using Cryolun here, but if you don't find this brand, make sure to read the instructions to know if your spray will paint fabric or not. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you feel like it. And if you have any suggestions or any doubts, let me know in the comments below. Now I'm using the black and I'm also using the same stencil technique that I taught you on the last tutorial. And if you have any suggestions or any doubts, let me know in the comments below. I really like this kind of shading on the tail, it looks really natural under the water and also helps disguise the legs. Now you just have to put your monophane inside and close the way you want it to. You know me, I don't have that many monophanes, so I rotate the same monophane into different tails. This is why I like the velcro closing on the bottom of the tail. But you can also do a straight stitch, you can put a zipper, or you can put a fringe like we did on our previous one. And there you have it, how to make your neoprene basic mermaid tail. It is really important to learn how to make one, since this is the base for the silicone tail that I'm gonna teach you on the next tutorial. And the last and final tail that I'm going to teach you on this tutorial is based on Ariel. Ariel has many different tails at the Disney parks and they're all official, but I think the mermaid green sequin tail is the most popular one. It is so beautiful and shiny, but I don't really like the fluke very much, so I'm gonna change it and make my own version. I found this beautiful mermaid sequin fabric on eBay that allows my tail to change color. The kids love it. You can wear it green with all the scales down, or purple with all the scales up, or a mix of both. I usually like having my tail with stripes. 
At Disney, the sequins pretend to be scales and it doesn't have any side seams. And for that, we're going to wrap around the fabric on the tail. And this is the trick, you need a mermaid tail dummy. That way you can make your tail as if it was on your body, but without poking yourself. If you would like me to teach you how to make one, just leave me a message on the comments. Anyways, wrap the fabric around your dummy and pin in place. Since the dummy has exactly your measurements, it won't be any tight. Now I know that you can glue sequins in the neoprene, I know that many famous mermaids do it, but me personally, I don't like it. And since I wanted to put a zipper on it, I hand stitch it everywhere that there was a pin. Two hours later. And then I went through the machine with the zipper. And as you can see, because of my Brazilian badunk dunk, I have to add more sequins on the back. <laughs> it gets kinda invisible, but I also added a dorsal fin to hide it even further. This trick I learned on the silicone tails made for Mako mermaids. You can't really see any of the seams because most of them are on the back. With the same tail, I make very sweet mermaid gigs and also the siren ones. Oh, and by the way, shout out to the mermaids of the Great Salt Lake for embracing me as their sister. Anyways, I am almost done, guys, I promise. I just wanted to show you how it looks with fabric paint. I don't know why, but I like painting with very diluted paint. So I buy puffy paint and I mix with water and I do this kind of watercolor painting on my tails. I also added a little piece of the sequin fabric to the fluke and some scatter of sequins. That way it looks more like Ariel's tail. What do you guys think? On the next tutorial I'm gonna teach you how to make silicone fins to add to your tail. Please subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments what tail is your favorite. Is it number one, two or three?